back now with the panel. Uh, Donald Trump's going to be presiding over a divided uh, country. And what's interesting is, is what the same language that conservatives used during the Obama years is now language that's being borrowed by progressives. Let me play for you a little compilation we put together. We're going to take our country back and you're either with us or you're against us. So what is happening to America? Take our country back. It leaves me wondering where I've been living and with whom I'm living. This is not my America. What he stands for is not the America I know and love. It seems like we're destined to be split screen America. I don't but, know, how does he do it? Yeah, how does he try to pay, uh, put this back together? Yeah, we still are America though. Uh, we're still a country that is a country of social mobility. We're still a country of immigrants. We're still a country with common ancestors. And reviving the civics of America and the idea that, that we're going to be united, at least not right now, but in some common future. Mm -hmm. And talking in that hopeful way that Martin Luther King did, that Abraham Lincoln did, seems to me that's the way. Hey, to let me add, uh, Senator Turner and I agree on nothing, but I admire her greatly. We are both from the land, northeastern Ohio. We are yes. both church attending <laughs> Browns fans, so we know how to pray and to lose. <laughs> and, 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 and we have a lot in common. I admire her greatly. We just disagree. And I do think that re-emerges eventually, that it's politics, not life. That but it's, it's, I, I, that's I, apocalyptic. Well, you know, here's what I feel as if, and boy, did both campaigns do it. Apocalyptic rhetoric like this, that if, if you don't vote this way, the that's country's right. gone. Right, that's right. If, I, I, and, and I think it depends right. which right turn America's about to take. Is it about to take a Reagan-style right turn where we slash regulations, slash taxes, have a fiscal stimulus program, and there is job growth? That's one option. Or is it going to be a nativist populist right turn, which adopts some of the anti-immigrant tone, yeah. anti-race tone right. of some of those groups that we've seen in Europe? I mean, the fact that the first Politi foreign politician to congratulate Donald Trump was Marine Le Pen of the National Front, yeah. anti-immigrant, mm -hmm. anti-Muslim, xenophobic yeah. group, and the first foreign politician to visit him was Nigel Farage. I don't even know if they know what image that sends. And we can't make America great again without love, without hope, without justice, without peace, and without an acknowledgement that the fear that was stoked not only by President-elect Trump's campaign, but also a lot of fear was stoked by Democrats as well. But there are people who are really fearful. I mean, I talked to one of my friends in New York and she teaches, and she talked about how some of her Hispanic students came in crying, thinking that their parents were going to be deported the next day. We, the collective we, people of leadership on all sides are gonna have to deal and with this. I do think the problem is to add one thing to yeah. this list, it's just competence. That's what I worry about. It's not so much Trump's ideology, I'm not sure there is one. It's just whether he can actually get the job done. It's like me saying, ah, I want to be a heart surgeon. How hard could it be? The heart's over there, you open it up, you put a new one. Yeah, I worry uh, about, I, I, it's actually kind of complicated. I worry about hyper loyalty. Uh, I'm an old Nixon guy and I think we have a merger of Nixon and Rockefeller here on ideology and personality. President Nixon was brought down by blindly loyal partisans. Mm -hmm. Dean, mm -hmm. Colson, Liddy. Mm -hmm. People he did not know what they were doing that they thought were acting on his part. When he staffs up because of a lack of power, I am worried about these 4,000 people that come with him. Reagan brought Meese, Baker, and Deaver. It could be Bannon, Conway, and, and Priebus. But he also had Fred Fielding in the background there, making sure, and Nancy Reagan was a check on everybody right yeah. now. That's what worries me. Hey, uh, one thing we've all been wondering about is Twitter and uh, Mr. Trump. Let me play, this is what he said to uh, 60 Minutes about Twitter. I'm going to do very restrained if I use it at all. I'm going to do very restrained. I find it tremendous. It's a modern form of communication. There should be nothing you should be ashamed of. It's, it's where it's at. Speaking of where it's at, Donald Trump tweeted this morning <laughs> and he treats the following. Wow, the New York Times is losing thousands of subscribers because of their very poor and highly inaccurate coverage of the Trump phenomena. He was noting a, I guess, a letter that the Times has sent to some subscribers. So that is uh, patriotic duty. Subscribe to the New York Times. There, there it is. But, it, you know, this is it's probably how he's going to have a conversation with the press is that it's always going to be through Twitter. Yeah, and you know, the guy is animus driven. I mean, he wakes up in the morning to get in fights with people. That's been true since the 1980s. Uh, and I'm not sure that's going to change. I mean, how, how often does like a, a 70 year old egomaniac and, change? And, <laughs> I think that, and that's the real concern globally is that we don't know who we're dealing with. And if he doesn't get his way on trade deals, does he slap tariffs on China mm -hmm. and 
provoke a currency war. If he doesn't get his way with Japan or with Mexico, what's the retaliation going to be? And I think that's what people are nervous about. How, how quick is he going to be to respond in ways that well, are potentially at, very damaging? It's interesting here, quickly, Hugh, I want to put up the... Um the two tweets he did in response to protesters, one was about seven o'clock at night, as you see here, looked like very, thought that the uh, protesters were professional, incited by the media, very unfair. Then at three in the morning, about nine hours later, he says, no, 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 love the fact that small groups of protesters last night had passion for a great country. We all want them to come together and be proud. Yeah. First Amendment is a beautiful thing. Yeah, suddenly yeah. somebody reminded him of that. Yeah. Well, as Senator Turner yeah. said off camera, Twitter is addictive. It's a lot of yeah. fun. It releases stress. It's yes. good fun. There are ways to do it, even as President of the United States. And he's right. It's where it's at. It's right. just, but there is a head of state issue here yeah. where you have to be so careful. He oh. have a temper tantrum on Twitter every day. Yeah, that, that will be a lot for us to cover. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in 45 seconds with Endgame and a Washington parlor game that people...